Oh, hey viewers, how are you doing? I'm getting ready for the holiday season. I got my Spotfire Santa hat on. I hope you guys are looking for the holidays. And maybe this holiday season, you might get a new tablet or smartphone. And know what you should do with that tablet or smartphone? Look at Spotfire dashboards. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to design for mobile devices. I'm gonna start with this uh, expense analyzer dashboard. And this dashboard, you can actually access yourself by going to the samples that ship with Spotfire. Um, and in this dashboard, it's a great dashboard where I get some good high-level information about a business expenses in different departments. I can drill down um, on all of this different data. However, I wanna show you what this looks like on a mobile device. In the Spotfire mobile app, you can see that all the visualizations have been stacked vertically. I have product management, marketing, finance, text areas all on top of each other. The bar charts are also all on top of each other. It's difficult to see what goes where, what belongs to what department, and this is definitely not optimized for a mobile experience. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to structure a dashboard and how to design to better optimize that mobile experience. Now there's a lot of detail in this video. I wanted it to be very hands-on. Um, however, if you don't have time to make it through the whole video, I wanna point out this community article, which I'll put a link to in the description. And this is best practices for developing mobile, mobile applications with Spotfire. Um, and this talks about different things to consider, such as you know hiding zoom sliders, using the right charts, using KPIs, things like that. Um, I'm gonna go over a lot of that in this video. So let's get started. Now, the most important thing I need to talk about is the uh, page layout options. And you can get this by right clicking on a tab um, and going to page layout options. You can do this for each individual page and you can choose to use a mobile layout when the width is less than a certain value. Um, I'm using a Samsung Galaxy uh, smartphone and I think the uh, minimum width is 720. Uh, so I'll actually put 730 here so it switches to the mobile view on less than 730. Um, below that you have this fixed page size. And this is actually not just for mobile devices, these last two options. Um, if you have a giant screen and you're designing for people that are on smaller screens, like even desktop monitors, um, you can use this to allow the visualizations to kind of pan around and not um, all be jumbled together. So as an example, I'm gonna show you what both of these do. I'm gonna use this width at 1,000 and I'm gonna hit close. And when I kind of minimize this window a little bit, you'll see that when the width becomes less than 1,000, this scroll bar comes together. So that means that these charts are not being all squeezed together. So again, this is useful even for desktop, um, desktop screens. Now if I continue to bring this width in, you'll see this shift to a stacked mode and this is the mobile uh, layout. So you can design for the mobile view as well and preview it this way. I wanna point out that if you're using in document properties the canvas sizing um, and you're using different custom sizes that are not fit to window, um, like the iPad landscape or what have you, um, then if you go into uh, the, the page layout options, they'll be grayed out and you won't be able to use that. So going back into this dashboard, um, the next thing I wanna talk about is how to structure this. Uh, we kind of recommend KPIs for the first page that people land on or some kind of high level information. These bar charts, for, in for instance, are uh, high level because if you go into the show hide items, they're only showing the top four values. It's not showing all the bars which could crowd the visualization um, and crowd the mobile view. It's just the top four. Now, KPIs have the added benefit of action controls. So let me switch over to another dashboard I set up and, and show you how this works. So this dashboard has an overview page with various KPIs. Uh, there's actually more than just those original three departments in this data set. So this is showing for all of the departments. It's showing their expenses over time uh, for this week, the year-to-date expenses. And if I click on this, it's actually gonna jump to the details page and filter out, um, filter to just the values for that department. So here I see for the sales department, I can see their top four uh, expense categories, their trends over time. And, um, and I wanna point out with this tr these trends that 
on the x-axis here, I have kind of the months and the, the date here. So I actually turn that off from my line chart because that's gonna reduce the crowding on my mobile device. So uh, the other thing I might wanna turn off is the legends here. And let's take a preview of what this looks like in the mobile device. So you can see this stacked here. Um, and I wanna point out that I also added a button here to return to the original page. Let's take a look at my actual smartphone. So this is using the Spotfire app, and you can see it's very easy to scroll through the different visualizations on the page. And if I hit the return button at the top, I go back to the KPIs where I can select different departments and have this all work back and forth uh, very interactively and very optimized for a mobile experience. Okay, so now I need to go ahead and show how to configure these actions. I'm gonna return to my KPI page and start from here. So in the KPI settings, you can view the different tile sets for the different KPIs you have. Um, and in those settings, you get action controls. So here I have this selected where it performs an action on a click, which means that whenever I select a tile, uh, an action is gonna be performed. And what that action I, I've set here to do is filter to the marked rows, whatever is marked by my selection, filter to that data, and then navigate to the details page, which is my other page. So let me go ahead and close this out. And I'm gonna select here the marketing department. And now you can see that this whole page has been filtered to just the marketing, marketing data. And um, I, I even have this up here where it says marketing department and I have a return button. Now the return button is just a shortcut for the users on the mobile devices. And I've set this by creating an action control with uh, this icon here. Uh, you can create an action control, and what I have this doing is resetting all filters, all markings, and navigating back to the overview page. In order to have the marketing department show up here um, and have that word, I just have department in here static, and then I create a calculated value, which you can do right here as a dynamic item. In the calculated value, I have uh, set to the department column and then just the first value. Uh, the only available data, this is all limited by uh, the marking and it's limited by the filtering. You really only need to use one here, but uh, I have them both done here. And make sure you turn off the tool tips when you do this as well. Now again, on this page, I've went ahead and limited everything uh, by a uh, filtering scheme, but you can use limiting by marking if you configure it the right way. Um, but generally what I've done is just made a general template here that can work for any department, and then just the data is changing behind the scenes on what is represented. Now, the last part I wanna point out is the locking visualizations. If you go to visualizations, arrange visualizations, and lock visualiz visualization area, you can control um, the minimum size of these visualizations so they don't all get crowded. This is not just for mobile devices, this is even for desktop viewing and browser viewing. If you don't want a uh, visualization to get too small or, or crunched in, you can lock the area. And this is especially important in text areas, both for mobile and uh, browser views. So um, if I didn't lock this, this text area at the top, my uh, mobile view would look something like this. And you can see that there's this really uh, large area at the top for the text area. So by going to visualization um, and locking this text area to the top, then we can prevent that from happening in the mobile view. So that wraps it up for today's quick tip. This is going to be the last video we do this year. We're taking a break for the holidays. We'll be back on the week of January 6th. Thank you guys so much for joining this year. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and we look forward to seeing you in the new year. Thanks.